absolute skew goes back to back in Vegas. There it is. And welcome everyone to Las Vegas. This is the Predator Pro Billiard Series. We are at the Rio All Suites Hotel and Casino with five pro events for the next eight days. The Las Vegas Men's Open, the Women's Open, the Predator World 10 Ball, the Women's Invitational Showdown, and the Apex Mixed Doubles. Some exciting matches for you, especially on the women's uh, side of pro billiards. Some of the best players, if not most of the best players in the world, here this week, along with 7,000 amateur players. This is George Deha in the booth with Eric Horlifson bringing you the live action between two of the best players in the world. Good to be with you guys again. This is going to be a great match here. Battle of Chinese Taipei against Austria. Two of the most successful players in the world over the last 10 years. Both world champions. We were looking at their match history. They actually don't have a ton of recorded match history. Only, t yeah. only two matches Fargo. between them. With co-winning both of them, 8-7 and 11-6. Those being the Maldives Open. That was in uh, April of 23. And then it goes back all the way to 2016, uh, the China Open, that he wins at 11-6. I'm sure they faced each other, but just wasn't reported to Fargo. That's where I get my numbers. Yeah, it's kind of surprising. I mean, they, mm -hmm. they've probably played in 25, even more tournaments together. You'd think they would have oh. faced off more than twice. They've faced off in the World Pool Masters. They've faced off in the World Cup. Uh, I mean, but the World Cup, of course, would be uh, teams. Mm -hmm. They'd be partnered up. But, uh, yeah, it, uh, but this is a high, high-quality match. An 831 Coping E Fargo rate and Albin 824. There's seven points difference. Uh, means nothing here. Yeah, I'm going to take. Match. I'm going to take Co just on a whim. Mm -hmm. uh, Co's results here uh, in this format have been rather rather good. Uh, he hasn't really had too many big wins here, uh, but he is a three-time uh, world nine ball champion, and of course, uh, Alvin Ocean is a two-time world nine ball champion. Uh, is it seven-time Moscone? MVP in 2016. And one of the things about the Moscone Cup that I've noticed is 2015, it was $20,000 to win. Actually, 2016, and now it's 40000 in 2023. Yeah, prize money going up all around in the world of billiards. Even in Predator tournaments, looking at about a 30% increase in the, in the prize money in the Las Vegas Open this year. Both players had a, a bye to start with. Uh, Alvin defeated Clido Kachi in straight sets, and uh, Copigny defeated Chad Burgess in straight sets. Alvin catching the break a little thin there. Didn't go directly in the corner pocket, but a ball came around, kicked the cue ball in the corner, so Co gonna have the first chance here. Most obvious pocket for the seven is blocked by the ten a little bit, but the six lies w well to play the seven in the long pocket. Won't have to do much with the cue ball traveling towards the eight. Co still playing with the wood shaft. Chinese type. Taipei players seem to have been some of the last players to transition over to Carbon. Who knows? Maybe they'll, they'll, they never will. Works well for them. Coping Chung still on wood as well. Oh, he might overhit this a bit. Look out here. Yeah, makeable. But the cue ball is going to be traveling a lot off this shot. He'll have a real high percentage safe, but he'll be wanting, wanting to keep Ocean off the table. If he plays it with a bunch of left, he might be able to hold the cue ball up the middle, back and forth. Could try to slow the movement of the cue ball down with draw and play around the four as well. Ideally running into the nine. He knows there's a lot of angle here. 
Just thinking about how to slow the cue ball down, really. Drag it to the nine. Couldn't even draw it that much. Oh. Did slow the movement of the cue ball down, but didn't get quite get the angle he wanted on the four. Looks like the four does pa pocket past the eight. I'm gonna have to navigate through a lot of traffic going to the right. If he chooses to play safe, he'll have a pretty good layup safe behind the nine. So he's gonna play a two-way shot here. Hopefully not pocketing the eight. Playing the four over to the pocket by the six. Cue ball behind the nine. A good look at Coe's uh, cue. Reportedly to be somewhere in the $50,000 range. I've heard that. Yeah. Send cue. I was looking at them. They have a booth set up, and they were actually taking challengers last night in um, uh, Scotch doubles. Uh, uh, both uh, Coping Yi and Coping Chung, along with Coping Han, they were all in the booth and just uh, playing everybody that walked by. One of the advantages of coming to this event and being here is you now have players with their own booths, like the Coe brothers, Alex Pagalion. Uh, they've set up, and you know, the ven vendors, of course, have lots of booths. q -Tech, Predator. Uh, get to try out all the equipment. Yeah, real one-stop shop for a great event sure. here. Amateurs can play in their own skill level division tournaments. Watch the pros. Pick up some equipment along the way. Really nice event here put on by Predator and CSI and BCA. Oh, look at this hit. Look what's going to happen here. Yeah. Hello, eight ball? Yep. Wow. Controlled kick there. What a hit by Alvin. Guaranteed distance. Little bonus ending up behind the eight. It's got a pretty decently high percentage hit here. If he does hit it, not a lot of traffic to hide behind on the right side of the table. We called it on the side. Didn't have quite enough energy to get there. Max Lechner in the audience watching this match. Of course, he is uh, Alvin's uh, World Cup partner. Yeah, Josh and Pia Filler just walking in as well. Highly anticipated match here. Alvin is just a picture-perfect example of proper fundamentals. A slow, long backswing, pause at the back, good transition. Left eye dominant. Yeah, keep seeing that the more the more now that we're looking for it a little mm -hmm. more. I think he might be able to stop the cue ball here, shoot the seven in the opposite corner pocket. Very little cue ball movement here in the last four balls. Be looking to hit a better break than he did in the first attempt in the first rack here. Over hit this one a bit, but he'll be able to come around two rails, shoot the 10 in the same pocket. And we're just gonna draw out of it. Play the 10 in the shorter pocket. Got into that ball nicely. Had a lot of angle there. Just drew out of it so smoothly. Wasn't it any issue for him at all. Following the Las Vegas Open format here, best of three sets. If both, if the first two sets are split, we'll be going to a shootout. Winner of this will advance to the final 32 single elimination. Loser will have to win one more to get back to that stage. Rest of the winner side qualification matches for the men are going on right now. Just taking a look at the outside tables, Wu Kun Lin is playing Carlo Beato. You named off some great matches in the uh, earlier. 
Yeah, Tyler Steyer and Shane Van Boning are playing yeah. on this time slot as well. Battle of two top American players. Gachi and Mario He, Conrad Yushushin, Patsura, Vitali Patsura, Matteo Sinoki, and Chang Zhong Lin, Dennis Grab, and Mishko Fortunski. Alex Pagaline playing John Mora, Feder Gorst and Lee Van Corteza. We got some great matches. Victor Zielinski and Marco Tucher. All right here at the Rio. Huge square break there from Ocean, going all in with the power. Got good separation, but nothing down. Three's in a very tough spot in this rack. Gonna have to be shot in the same pocket as the two. Tough opener here for Ko. These are spots where these world-class players just excel, though. I mean, difficulty on this shot for any even mid-level amateur is maybe 50% success at most. I'd expect them to make this. Solid, quiet queuing. Tough shot, didn't get it. A little too thin to be wanting to bank at this ball. Could track the cue ball towards the five. One's guaranteed to be safe. Try to use the 10 as a blocker. Could play the one up table as well and target the cue ball behind the six, but I think he's a little safer playing the one safe. Good feel there. Didn't leave an edge for Ko. Gonna have a good kick off the left long rail here. Kind of tough to contact this one two rails. You'd want to contact at two rails. I think he'll take a shot at the two in instead of one. Oh, he's gonna play an aggressive jump bank. There's actually room between the eight and nine for the one to bank in. What a shot this would be. Cue balls. He'll draw the cue ball to stay on that end of the table. Wow! Almost <laughs> went off two balls. That <laughs> was exactly, pocket. and that would have counted. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that was pretty close, actually, uh, coming off that nine ball. Just a little fuller. I think Ocean will be going to the jump queue here as well. You know, last year, Ko put on quite a show on this very same table uh, against Feder Gorst. We had a match here. I remember commentating it, and it was a really high-quality match between the two players. Caught that. Nice shot. A lot of jump shots involved. Uh, There's just a lot of moving, and it was a great match. And we expect to see the same thing here. At least I do. I think He's Ocean might have to come up with something creative here, playing the one off the three. He can get straight enough where he can pocket the three, but he won't have any position for the four. Mm, smart shot as well. Didn't quite get where he wanted. I think he'll shoot the four ball. Bank two, uh, two way. Bank's too wide. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, he's on the three here, yeah. He's on the three next. Little unlucky to catch the window between the seven and nine. Always tough when you're drawing a safe to really pinpoint the cue ball. Did okay, but not quite the result he wanted. Another tough long opener for Ko here. He'll want to slow the cue ball down two rails around the six, but might, might not be comfortable hitting it at that slow of a speed. If he isn't, he'll play the four in the same pocket as the three. That's... 
That shot's a lot tougher than it looks. <laughs> Did well there. He's got to play a bunch of inside. Or back off and take the bigger cut angle on the five. I think that's more advisable. Too much traffic going any more left. Great action here so far in the first two racks. Two masters of the game going at it. Silver so hit this to the point where he can't even see it. This is going to be an easy two rail. Look for him to definitely hit half the ball here. 10 to 20% of the time, he'll actually kick the five in the pocket. Going to create distance, though, and the five's going to end up near that seven, eight, nine wall. Only caught it ball first. I mean, things haven't gone well for Cohen the first two racks here, but a little bit of negative body language. I mean, you, you understand it. He knows that any any kind of half mistakes he makes are, are going to be punished. See if he can recover with his next chance at the table. Nice speed there from Ocean. Look how bad he's got him trapped here, George. Wow. Wow, the six ball. Yeah, even if you go off the left, yeah. the right long rail, the six is kind of in the way of going back towards the five. You know, Alvin does have a tendency of doing that to you. What a shot that was. Checked it off two rails, went long of the six, checked it back towards the five. Really deserved a better result there. What a tough shot. Great shot, no reward. Yeah. Ocean in solid control. So for two on the break so far. Be looking to get that break going. If he does, this first set could be over fairly quick. I got to see that shot you just mentioned on that kick shot on, on YouTube. A little bit behind there. Yeah. It's quite a, quite lagging quite behind, yes. Yeah. Great shot to even hit the ball. Went at it with speed, too, where he had a chance to get safe. Just didn't, balls didn't end up where he wanted. Can run this cue ball a little bit. Well, maybe stay on the same side is fine. Want to play the ball with outside spin when you can. Two zero lead by Alvin Ocean. It's you know you, you hate to see a player lose a game on a shot that was just uh, would make any highlight reel in the world. Mm -hmm. Best effort possible. Sure. Not not the. Not a positive result. I guess that just speaks to how bad he was trapped as well. You know, just trapped him that badly. I feel like Ocean's results in the Pro Billiard Series haven't been quite up to par with what his results are in other tournaments. He hasn't played in a lot. Maybe he's played in about 25% of them. But when he has, I feel like he's finished around that 9 to 16 type range a little more than he'd be used to. Crushed the break, fluked one in this time. No shot on the one, could be a bank available. 
Cue ball will be tracking around towards that 7 8 9 area. Not much going to happen with position on the two if he does hit those balls. Safes aren't easy. Could play the cue ball behind the five. Could try to draw the cue ball towards the three six. He's calling the one. Just wondering what's going to happen to the cue ball here. Could actually check it. That'd be a nice creative shot. He did check it. What a shot here. These guys are coming with some great shots in these first three racks. That's what you would expect from these two players. Next order of business is going to be opening up the 7-8. Rest of the rack doesn't like great for that. He could get an angle on the 5 where he kind of runs into the 8-10 and moves towards the 6. a little straight, but he's got enough angle going to the left that he can stay on the left side of the table. I think he'd like to be below the five here, as long as the drawing angle isn't coming into the five too much. Would you consider, you know, when he shoots the five, would you consider coming into the eight, uh, seven, eight, ten? I think he should. I think yeah. that's what he was playing for. He's just going to get too far below it here. Oh, yes. A little, little unlucky there. He might be able to catch <clears throat> the eight, maybe. I don't think. Uh, no, I don't think so. Yeah. I think it goes right by it. I think it's going too far to the yep. left of it. Safes aren't, act, aren't that easy here either. Could get aggressive and try to shoot the 5 into the 10, 10-7 ten, area. Use the 9 as a blocker, but that's tough. Tough to get enough energy in the cue ball there. And it's... I'm not quite sure here. He's not quite sure either. Taking his extension. You could thin the five to the to the right and play the cue ball up table. Looks like he's going to try something really creative here. Not quite sure. Yeah, he can't even thin the five. The cue ball will hit the nine. Tough spot. I wonder if he actually played it like that. If be he, a good two way. If he did, Way that's a two -way. yeah, yeah, even a two way, not maybe leaning more towards the two way side. Smart shot there. And that that, that is one of his attributes that, that just kind of separates him from a lot of other players. Yeah, smart player, stays Very composed. Smart player, yeah. Kind of high octane, you know, when things aren't going his way, not afraid to show emotions, but knows how to knows how to get down and get the job done. Cole Brothers, known as some of the strongest jumpers in the world. Didn't get that one. Oh, is he going to come up with a yeah. safety? Yeah, one ball on the table that could have saved them did. Ocean's turn to go after the jump cue here. Five's either going to hang up or go in. Cole would rather it hang up. Oh, it does. Yes. Now we'll see how he works his way around that seven ball. Yeah, I like getting to exactly where he put his tip down there. Just run the cue ball towards the 8-10. Leave it a little bit to luck. I feel like if you get between the 8 and the rail and come towards the 10, that's going to be your best percentage of getting a shot. Oh, this might be a little hard. It is. Yep. Hmm. Probably come down now and play safe. Yeah, he can create an angle getting below the seven. Use the roll onto the ten. Put Ocean in a real bad spot. Still gonna get a pretty proper angle on the seven here. Looking pretty good. 
about perfect there. Might have to draw at it. He'll be okay, just the chance of really sticking the cue ball to the 10 or less if he's actually drawing at it rather than following it. I'm surprised he kind of played the cue ball on that track if he was drawing it. You would think he would just follow it, but I guess he was still worried about the cue ball following through a little bit more on the same angle. Yeah, and bumping the tent a little bit, mm -hmm. kind of leaking out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you'd, you'd really want him up against the tent here because this is giving him a good opening yeah, to make the hit. Yeah. Calling him in the corner. It's going to be a good result for Cove. Seven's right where he wants to be on a good angle for the combo for the 8-10. So needed this game to get back in this set. He's a big favorite to do that right now. Early tenths do count. Yeah, we'll be He's playing the... Men's World 10 Ball Championships later in the week, and they won't count in that format. Be changing up the format a little bit there, too. Less likely to get to a shootout. It'll have to go hill hill in the deciding set to be going to a shootout in that tournament. But both these players really trying to go after this first set. Worst they can do, even if they lose the second set, will be to go to a shootout. Going to be best of five in the redraw format. At the World 10 ball as well. Best of five races to four. Only going to a shootout if it goes 3-3 in the fifth set. There's been a lot of talk about uh, about that change in, in the format. And uh, when you put it the way you just did, uh, it makes a lot more sense. Mm-hmm. Table's been playing well this week. I feel like the speed's pretty consistent. Had a little bit of rain on the first day, which is very rare for Las Vegas. Had a little bit of rain on the first day here, so it actually got a little bit humid. But conditions are pretty normal now. Look at that. Square smash from Ko. Balls flying everywhere, but nothing down. Let's see how aggressive Ocean wants to be here. He can play this ball across two rails, tough pocketing on the one, or he can just back off and try to play the cue ball behind the three. He's looking at that. Looking at that, but more slow rolling it. Feels like he can still hit it aggressive enough that he can pocket it well. Just going to make the pocket a little bigger with less speed. Kind of cueing it with right a little bit. If he is, I, I think he'll be playing safe. Might be getting back to the center of the cue ball here. Uh, he's on left, so he's going offense. I mean, that was a tough shot to hit at that speed. That's why I thought he it would come tough. across two rails and play the two past the four. I like your thinking there. Yeah. Yeah. Um. It, it's just, it makes that one ball much easier to pocket, a higher percentage to pocket, too. Yeah, the trade-off is that if he got closer to the pocket there and he kind of got into the inside rail a bit, it would have made the pocket bigger. But I, I'd still favor the... Oh, you imagine, imagine that element of it that I didn't even realize? If he plays it like this, the four can become a blocker. And that's what actually ended up coming up here. May have had that in mind. I'm sure he did. I, I missed that part of it, but yeah, that was a smart shot. Could have uh, caught a window here. It's a small one. Unlikely that he left it. He'll have a makeable jump. Comboing the five in if he doesn't have the window. 
Getting right down on the angle here. Reminder, these players are on a 30-second shot clock, so probably be calling his extension, particularly if he's jumping. There he, go there he goes on extension. Just got to really see the angle here. The one safe would be crossing the one-up table and playing the cue ball behind the three, but the three is really close to the rail. He might have a shot at just going at the five. Uh, looks like he's crossing it. See how his speed is here. Touch shot, cue ball behind the three. Nice try. I think he'll get ag aggressive and elevate at this ball. I think you have to. It's not, think so. not any strong pass going forward. That corner of the 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 nibble of the pocket there could disturb his progress for position. He is going to go forward. Maybe just run the cue ball into the ten. Oh, rail first. Rail first. How you like that? Worked out for him. Boy, did it. It's a little thin, but he can hold the cue ball. And he'll be a favorite after he makes if he makes this two in the side here. Tie things up at two. See, even being a higher le a higher level player myself, I would never consider rail first there. I, you know, I just it's just not a shot that I know well enough mm -hmm. that I feel like I can execute mm -hmm. high enough, right? Not saying never, but I, I don't think I would shoot it in a one-off spot like that in a, in a big competitive situation. <clears throat> well, going forward, he, he really didn't have a way to get the cue ball off that bottom rail. Oh, sure, for sure. So, and um, the other shot would be to elevate, right? I probably would have chose to elevate. It's actually, if you don't, if you know the rail first shot, it's mm -hmm. it's easier than elevating for sure. I actually do play that quite a bit myself. But uh, I didn't see it in that in that particular. I kept looking for a way to get the cue ball off the bottom rail and and come up towards position for the two. Mm -hmm. Once he shot it, it looked obvious. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Maintaining decent line here. Got cue balls going the wrong way a bit. If if he doesn't like it, he can go to the short side. That's what he's looking at now. Drew this one. He's okay. He's got the right angle to come back towards it. That was his main focus there. Got to watch out for the side, but he'll know that. Play over to the second rail here. was playing a little wider than it looked. Got away with a half roll there. Playing off the side of the eight. In good position now. Cole went on a bit of a dry spell he, he, for about two or three years. Maybe even four or five, including COVID, of course, when you know most players weren't traveling. Mm -hmm. But he won a, about five major titles from about 2010 to 2015, and then went a little dry for a few years. But he's he's come back, won the world world pool masters last year. Yeah, in did fact, well in a couple matchroom tournaments. Yeah, you make a great point because in 2015, as you, I think you said, uh, he won three world titles in that year. He beat SVB in the World 9 ball. He beat uh, Beato in the World 10 ball. Yeah, and then just kind of had some years where he won maybe one or two titles. But really it just shows how, how high level these, these top male players are playing at. Tough to win a tournament. 
And then, you know, from time to time, players just get hot, too. Like Francisco Ruiz went on a real hot streak. And now he's cooled off a bit. Josh Feeler seems to be the one playing the hottest right now. Oh, he's strutting his stuff right now. Yeah. Yeah, Co won the World Pool Masters here in uh, this past year. In fact, in 2015, as we were just talking about for Co, he was also Billiards Digest Player of the Year. Yeah, when you win that many titles, yeah. I think it's kind of <laughs> pretty obvious. Foregone, yeah. <laughs> Alvin Ocean, on the other hand, was uh, AZB, Arizona Billiards uh, Player of the Year in 2021. In fact, I remember Mike Howerton meeting him here to take pictures uh, mm -hmm. for his uh, for his webpage. Both players switching up different break attacks here. They haven't really been successful overall. Two all score line. Kozo for two on the break. Ocean's one for three after winning the leg. Both these guys have a pinpoint cue ball. I mean, it's so right on. Going to be looking to hit the lower half of the one here. Ideally tracking the cue ball back below the 2-4. Being elevated increases the difficulty. <clears throat> nice camera work there from our Predator crew. This tip looked pretty thick, actually. I like playing with my tip on the thicker side, too. But a lot of pros don't mind it lower. Table's looking pretty inviting. I have a little work to do from the five to the seven. Pocketing the five won't be an issue at all, so he'll be able to focus on cue ball control there. Wonder how he'll play from the five to the seven. There is there is a play where you come down to the short rail and go to the outside of the like the long rail side of the eight, but I feel like the cue ball could run into the seven off that track. And that's exactly what he's thinking right now. You know, this is how these top players think, right? Yeah. He sees a bit of a problem getting back towards the seven. So he's considering what angle do I want on the four to get my exact angle on the five to take care of that one problem, yeah. right? Even to the point where he took an extension when the ball is like right in the pocket. It's nothing to do with the three. It's just about how he's going to play the rest of the rack. Do you like the rail first? Four rails? Well, yeah, I just saw that one, yeah. or, or even ball first, four rails. I just saw that one. So you come, you come to the long rail side of the eight, and then you draw the cue ball around four rails. You've got to be careful on new cloth on that shot, though. The cue ball can release off the third rail okay hmm well, kind of in between he'll figure it out it's just interesting to see what what he'll actually choose he could draw the cue ball a little bit to the right of the nine and kind of flirt with the side pocket he's going to go thin yeah thin between the nine ten oh, he's yeah. gonna go Yep. Just real thin, straight up. Nice shot. He figured it out as expected. Nice match so far. So this will be for Ocean to go up 3-2. Breaking to win the first set. One for three on the break so far. Tried a couple different ones. Caught it. Cut one of them, hit two of them square. Both players hitting the hitting the rack real hard, giving themselves the best chance to fluke a ball if they don't make the one in the side. Mm 
Now for a 3-2 score, both players won their uh, two games in a row. And now Albin breaking that tie with one more game. Co waiting to get back to the table. Albin wanting to keep him in the chair. Rums of Puerto Rico and Medalla Light sponsoring these tournaments. The official equipment, of course, is Aero Rack, Arcos 2 balls, the Arcadia cloth, the Apex tables, both 7 foot and 9 foot available here in Vegas. Yeah, Lynn Tables on board of, as sponsors for this year as well. Kamui. Q Sports International with their expo here. Going half on the rail, half off here. Just crushed at it. I feel like the rack didn't spread quite as well as he would have wanted there. Middle of the rack kind of collapsed a bit. Didn't leave a shot oh though. He might jump this shot. I think he will. He's, he's a strong jumper. It's worth the value. Got to be careful with the cue ball running behind the 4-7 if he does. He's got a full minute to decide his fate on what he's going to, what approach he's going to use here. They're on the shot clock as we spoke of earlier, but they get one minute to 60 seconds after the break. See if he tries to draw this to slow it down. He is. Look how much he's elevating. It's not to jump over the nine. It's to slow the cue ball down. Beautiful shot. Look how soft he landed that. Well, so he, soft. And he tried it to. Yeah. He, he tried to, right? I mean, it's like if he did, if he had any kind of follow on that, the cue ball was going behind the four seven or just going away from where he needed to be on the two. I mean, just perfect execution there. You know, when you see a player jump like that, um, that controlled. Uh, it makes you want to go practice your jump shots. Yeah, well, it's a, you know you can just see it's a game winner here. He sure, got himself out of a bad spot. Try to get the cue ball in the same position it's in now, a little bit lower on the yeah. table. Yeah, just make sure you're tracking back towards the five. You know, little things like this, right? Like you know, we 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 all know these adages, but just making sure you get on the right side of the ball here. You know, if if the cue ball is going the opposite way. It, Runouts can break down real quick. Especially when you're going to the side pockets. Yeah. Especially. He didn't. Oh, does he have no, He has enough to hit the hit the long rail and go to the left for the five ball on the right yeah. side. Yeah, yeah he's yeah, okay. He's Draw or follow, whichever one he prefers. Done follow, nicely controlled. Come two rails around for the six in the side. Same thing, maintaining angle going up table for the seven. Got to put a bunch of right on this to make sure you get tight enough into the second rail. Shot. Come ahead and go to the short rail and back up with it. Back yeah, up with it. Yeah, natural angle's natural lying okay angles. here. Coe's been over two on the break so far. Tried one from the middle. I think because it's hill hill, he'll favor the side rail just in case he doesn't make one. He'll have a chance not to leave the table wide open. Complete control here from Co, particularly on the first jump shot. Got a little 
little straighter than he would have liked. Can still go two rails forward and get a little closer to it. Looks like he's so straight he's going to power draw out of it. Here's a confident shot here. Just get closer to the ball, even if you have to let your stroke out like that. Just the advantage of getting closer to it. I kind of like going forward there, but the angle. Yeah, I guess he was, it, it was a little was straighter than straight, he was. Sure. Yeah. And this will tie it up at three. And it's all tied up with co-breaking. Masterful set so far. A lot of great shots here from both players. A couple long pots missed by Co. Co's actually missed five balls. Doesn't seem like it. Ocean's missed two. I think the ones that Co's missed have all been tough, though. Time at the table is 10% uh, off, 55 and 45. Alvin had that one foul on a break. Balls pocketed, two balls apart, 28 and 30. Definitely not much separating them here. He yep. is going to go from the middle. He's going for it. See what happens here. We haven't seen too many middle breaks. You'll be looking for the four and the two to go straight back in the side. Predator BK4 break here. Crushed it. Didn't get the two or the four. That says a lot because uh, most of his cues, are, in fact, just about all his cues are Zen cues. Yeah, I guess he recognizes the power of the power of the predator breaker. Ocean predator sponsored player playing with all predator equipment. You can push the cue ball up table. Looks like he's going to opt to kind of stay closer to the one, but put Co in a tougher spot to play safe. Yeah, he liked that specific angle to prevent Co from playing safe on the one, so he moved the four out of the way. Co can cut the one to the left. Gonna be, he'd be looking at getting the eight in between the one and the cue ball in that spot. I feel like the window between the eight and nine is pretty big there. This is some kind of aggressive. Oh, it's just it's just cue ball behind the eight five. Nice shot. Tied him up pretty well. Yeah, I think there's a track between the two seven. Tough kick, though. Might have to kick at it with draw. Albin, as he's walking by, taps his cue on the table in recognition of a great shot. Yeah. He's got a draw at this. A lot of feel involved here. Knowing the exact draw contact point and speed to kind of bend the cue ball back towards the one properly. shot see if he gets rewarded no way cue ball went in it's kind of tied up the the area for the two but that's a I'd call that a bad roll there with so many balls on the table a lot of chances to get safe hit it exactly how he wanted no way to control the exact result worst case scenario cue ball goes in the pocket Looks like Coe's going to have to play a combo on the second shot here. A 
He's got, yeah, he actually has room to track across and play the two in the right side pocket. Got to come real close to the seven here to get properly on the two. Going to draw around it. Oh, he hit the seven. Watch out. Still got the combo, but it's going to be tough to control the cue ball properly to get a shot on the two. He'll have safe options if he doesn't like it, but he'll do, he'll be definitely be thinking about all he can to not let o Ocean back to the table. The combo is very makeable, but the two and the cue ball are going opposite directions. Not sure here. If he's playing the ten, if he's playing the oh, ten the ball, ten goes. Yeah, the ten me. goes. He might be able to play the the cue ball behind the four. The ball twisted a little bit. Oh, boy. I think he got him. Uh, Might have a window. My instinct says there's a window there. Ocean with no extension left, just has to get down here. Ooh. Oh, he overcut it, so he did have room. Got a little roll, didn't leave anything. Coe could play at the side here with the four making the, si the side a bigger pocket. He's got to just barely rub off the four, otherwise he catches the point. What a nice shot. Six is going to be the toughest ball for Ko to navigate towards. If he gets below the five, he can play into the angle off the right long rail. He'll be looking to do that. Still got some small angles to navigate here. Getting just past the side for the four. He's overhit this as far as getting where he wanted on the five. He'll be able to go in the corner, though. Not going to be able to get below the five, though, how he, how he wanted. So he's thinking about playing over to this other side. Main thing about the six is he wants to be playing back into the angle of position because the, where he has to get the cue ball is a very small area. Still got to where he originally wanted. Played the thick part of the pocket there on purpose. Got a little straight, actually, but straight enough that he can draw back inside the eight and have room to pocket to get on the other side of the seven. Nice shot. He's in pretty good line now. Can't tell if he can see it all. Looks like he can. Yeah, he's okay. Slow roll this for the eight, or will he draw it back for the other opposite pocket? Yeah, he slow rolled it. Yeah. Yep. Strong set by both players. Neither player having a break and run. A lot of exchanges. A lot of a lot of high level thinking and creative shots. This 10 ball for the opening set. And Cole will be breaking to start off set number two. 
Albin won the lag, broke first. They're going to go to a break, and we'll take one, too. Co breaks the balls. Just waiting on our monitor feed here, but we'll do some 20 feet away from the table <laughs> commentating. We can 20? So, yeah, we can still see the balls. It's almost 20 yards. Huh. <laughs> uh. We're about as far away from the table as Albin is from the one ball. <laughs> Overcut that, lost the cue ball. Wow. Yeah. Co going to start out strong here in the second set. No obvious problems in the run out here.
two balls hanging, which will help him for position. Three and the four. Try to find the window and navigate around the five nine here. Oh, he's overhit this. He's laughing about it. Had to cross the angle there. Always dangerous crossing the angle. He might choose to play safe underneath the 10 with the cue ball. It's too thin to cut it Is in, it? yeah. Well, he's going to run the cue ball up. Ten. Up behind the 7 and the 10. Nice shot. Distance, two ball blocker. He's called the A ball in the corner pocket. He's jumping the seven into the rail to hit the two ball towards the eight. What a shot. <laughs> Didn't come up with the result he wanted. Coe's going to get away with that small positional error on the two there. Not really get away with it because he put him in a bad spot. Just got out of a spot where Ocean could have got a small roll. Rex looking good for Co here. Bit of traffic in the middle. Mainly the five. Can draw this across two rails. Just got to watch out for the scratch coming across the second rail. He's having a little think here. There is he can track the cue ball forward three rails. I feel like the five's a little bigger if he plays that shot. What he was worried about, going in the side off the second rail. It's okay, though. On the rail, so it's going to make the position for the five a little tougher. I feel like he'll just come out one rail. Play the five in the corner, possibly the side if he gets straight enough. Nice shot there. Controlled, elevated stroke. Came up nice for the five, straight in there now. Just playing around some obstacles here. He can draw the cue ball. Wide of the eight, just got to watch out for the nine coming towards the six. Going to have the wrong angle again. Uh, just straight enough, he's okay. Draw back for the seven. Uh -oh. Too much angle going the other uh -oh. way. Nice shot there. Probably come straight down the center of the table for this uh, eight ball. 
Yeah, just a little shot here that's obvious to some players, but you'd always want to try to hit the second rail here, like short rail, short rail. Never float it down one rail. Can't control the speed of the cue ball, lagging the cue ball over that long of a distance. So he'll hit it at a speed where the cue ball comes to the second rail here. If you're not used to it, stuff like this can happen. Obviously, he is used to it, and this is just a one-off situation. But you got to think about you can actually hit the shot a lot. A fair bit firmer when you start playing that shot. Got out of that straight in it. Shot nicely. Cheated the pocket to the rail side of the pocket. Not afraid to spin the ball there. Hitting it with a fair bit of left. Backhand English, actually. A lot of Taiwanese players play with backhand English. And Ko takes the first rack of the second set. Close first set. Ko winning 4-3. Ko's actually 0 for 4 on the break. Surprising stat there. Especially being 0 for 4 and winning the first set. Looks like he's going all in again. He's hitting it well from the middle. No reason he can't make a ball here. Again, look for the wired balls to have a chance. The four and the nine straight back in the side. Four just missed, made the six. Look at his position on the one. That six is actually a wired ball too. It's, it's not one that goes in as often, but it comes off the back row of the rack, one rail off the short rail, banks in the long corner. Toughest shot of the rack will be from the four to the five. Five's available on the bottom left or the right middle. Eight's going to be impeding some of the tracks back towards the five. See how he manages that. Gets on the rail side of the four. He can play the cue ball around three rails. And track the cue ball just past the side pocket. Playing the five in the bottom in the bottom left corner. I think he was considering that, but he has a little too much angle now. So he can, he can get to where he was pointing there and go three rails around to the same spot. really spin this ball on this new cloth that's a long way to follow that ball is he gonna go back and forth the yeah, eight ball. He yeah he could the go ball. back and forth the eight ball might give him enough room I'm not sure this looks like three rails around to me but you can get there going two rails I, I don't know see on your club cloth I, I, I would go at this right away three rails forward but 
on the stick cloth, it doesn't grab. Nice shot. What a beautiful shot that was. The speed, the direction, yeah. everything about it. Avoided the eight. Pinpoint accuracy with the cue ball. That was the biggest problem he needed to solve there, and he did it very well. So going to be coming up with the first his first break-in run of the match. Ocean's going to have to respond quickly here. He'll just be waiting for his next chance. A little close to the rail, but he'll come back for the seven. Oh, this is nice the way he's going to use the line here, the two rails, and come yeah. straight into the nine. Into the angle? Sure. Coe's taking a decent lead in the ball's pocketed department now, up to about. 57 to 29. Strong rack from Ko, takes the lead 2 nothing. It's won the first set. Just a reminder, it's a best of three sets, race to four here. And this is to get to the final 32. Winner moves on, the loser will have to play one more set to get there. One more match, excuse me. Women's event started this morning. 16 of the 16 women were seated in the second round. They'll be playing their first matches this afternoon. Earlier on this table, Maite Rapero pulled off a, an upset against Chihiro Kawahara, losing the first set and coming back and winning the second set and winning the shootout. No matter where Coe's br broke from, he's, he's hit them well. He's hitting them very well from the middle. He made two balls last time or just a six in the corner? I think two. Yeah. There's, there's an, the one. There's another wired ball so that, that one can come straight back in the, co in the corner as well. I wonder if we can track the cue ball between the seven, nine, one rail back towards the three. Looks like he's considering that. I think it lies fairly natural. If there's any kind of spin to be applied, it's not more than a tip. He's got a good angle to come between the seven, four. Off the off the head rail. I think it'll be uh, between the seven nine, but yeah, now he's considering between the seven four. Yeah. I just if you get to that side of it, I don't, I don't know if the three pockets past the ten. You would have a carom option on the ten if you did. Uh, Gonna check it up the same side of the table. Hmm. Guess the three goes and look how look how perfect his position is again here. Considering the carom.
just going to play safe, just lay up behind the 10. Guess he just didn't like the angles going back towards the, the three in the other corner pocket. But you can see even getting almost perfect on that shot, the three didn't go, three didn't really pass properly past the 10. Ocean can go at this ball two rails. Tough to stop the forward movement of the cue ball here, but he'll be trying to with a little draw. Left an opening for Ko, and this sure is does. like a 3 nothing lead in the second set. Everything really there, just wants to get an angle a little bit below the four, so he can draw up the right long rail. Used all the pocket on that one. Has the wrong angle here. If he takes it real thin and plays with a bunch of right spin, he could probably stay on the right side of the table. He could also draw two rails yeah. to the right. Yeah. yeah, actually, yeah, that's the right play. Good call. Got to watch out for the close foul here on the six. He's aware of it. He's real close to it. Did he hit it hard enough is the question. He's shorter than he'd want to be. Yeah. Is there a way out of it? Draw in between, draw to the side rail and play the cue ball below the 10. Delicate draw here. No, I don't feel like he can ever overdraw it, but if you don't draw it enough, then the cue ball can start tracking two rails and end up behind the 10. Nice shot. Wow. I'm, lucky, I'm lucky to get over the 10, but he'll be okay. He's got enough natural angle going up table. Might not have to leave himself a little longer on the seven than he would have wanted. Just wants to get up to the right hand side. Oh, he's going to stay on that side of it, huh? Kind of has to. He's over top of the 10, yeah. Oh, he's even stunning yeah. it to get to that position. Tough shot. That's why I thought he'd follow it to get up there, but he, he did that rather well. Already has one break and run in the second set. He'll be breaking on the hill. One game away from winning this match. Both players have played well, a lot of great shots. A lot of exchanges. Co making it look easy. Yeah. Some of the shots he just shot were just high quality shots that just looked so easy for him. 3 0 in the second set and breaking to close it out. You could see Alvin's face when he missed that last shot. Uh, 
He knew it had to go. <laughs> sure. <clears throat> Just looked up and said, oops, it's getting away. And now here comes the shot where he is most likely to be able to get back to the table. Right. At the yeah. break. Yeah, all it really takes it is one chance for these world-class players. Let's take a look at the outside tables. Wukun Lin and Carla Biato are in a shootout. Wu makes that one. They're still on the first set of four shots. Great hit. Two to one in the shoot up. Um, There's the chance that Ocean needed. Just checking if the two passes the 10. If it doesn't, he'll have a tricky carom, which he might pass up. Two doesn't pass the 10. Carom's tougher than it looks there. Two could even get in front of the pocket before the 10 gets there, so I think he's going to avoid that option. You can draw you can draw the cue ball past the side pocket here in between the 9 and the side pocket and at least get close to the 2. Don't see any mo any other obvious options. Guess he just wanted a guarantee, leaving himself a shot on the two. Just going to play it thin into the right long rail. Have it come back towards the three, and then this cue ball up by the six. Yep. Just chose to play into the bigger wall over here. Uh-oh. That could be trouble. Yeah, I didn't want that to go in. He's going to give it back immediately. Ocean was considering just laying on the two here. I don't mind it. Nicely judged. What do you do here? It actually ended up not bad for him, <laughs> especially if it's frozen. Can't, yeah. uh, can't tell if it's frozen or not. Ref should be up there seeing if it is. Maybe you can see from where he's standing. It, it was off, it was off the off, rail. Yeah. I think it still is. This is an interesting situation that comes up every once in a while, and players can just start kind of ticking at the at the two ball. Looks like he's going to shoot away from it here. Can you hit it thin enough to keep it there and get the cue ball back to where he's standing? Good call, yeah. Just feather this ball ever so slightly. I, I think he's going to kick at it. He could get himself in a weird spot there where all of a sudden, the, no, he, no, he's going to go across. Oh, nice perfect. Shot. This can be hit two rails thinly. Try to slide the two underneath the 10. Angle coming off the two is leading above the 10. Makeable shot, but easier said than done. Nice shot. Wow. We're in a nice little safety battle here. Uh, I think Co just won this safety battle. I don't see him hitting this ball. 
He's got a half a ball on both sides. Can he tie something else up up table? Is it too much of a risk of leaving a carom if he gives him ball in hand? I think the carom is... Ten's a fair bit in front of the two, so I think... But if he gives him ball in hand, he can just draw off of it. Maybe he just thinks he can't draw it enough. We'll have to see here. I think Cole might be able to carom this ten ball in. It's definitely a draw. Yes. Oh, unless you go inside there. I'm surprised the Ocean didn't recognize that. I mean, what else was he going to do, right? And he it was under a shot clock really, as well. Exactly. But if you're leaving a carom like this, you would think he would have tried to develop something else. He's got to be careful to cue this without, uh, you know, pushing it. It's pretty close to it, so. Good match from Ko. And that was moving it. on to the single elimination. Wow. What a match. What a match. Alvin Ocean needs one more match to get to the winner's qualification or to the qualification round for the final 32. Ko moves right in. Okay, guys, we got about five more rounds worth of action today. So if you have, if you have time, we'll be here with a free stream at Pro Billiard TV. Nice to be with you. We'll, we'll talk to you again. George Deja and Eric Harlison signing off. See you guys later.